Dan, it's great to have you here at UCLA, at the Anderson School, and you're giving your Marshak Memorial Lecture this afternoon on the topic, The New Science of Pleasure, Consumer Behavior, and the Measurement of Well-Being. Can you know, so tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into that and what it's all about? Well, I'm very happy to give this uh, lecture because uh, Jacob Marshak was one of the people that motivated me to get into economics and uh, pursue the line of research that I have done. Uh, a good deal of my work is grounded in some work he did very far uh, back in time, back at the end of the 50s, on uh, how people's preferences may not be s stable and preordained, uh, but uh, volatile. And in that case, people can make mistakes and they don't always make necessarily make good decisions that they don't regret later. So what I'm going to talk about today is the potential difficulty that consumers have in dealing with market choices, particularly when the commodities are complex, the markets are new, and they don't have a lot of experience. And I raise these issues for two reasons. One is there's a lot of very interesting new science uh, from physiology, from sociology, from uh, anthropology, and from cognitive psychology, which tells us a lot more about what makes consumers tick than the uh, classical model of the economists, which yes. assume that they will just do things to advance their self-interest, and that was all there was to it. Uh, the story is more complex than that. And one of the lessons, I think, of this, of this science is that uh, consumers need to be brought along and wheedled and coaxed to show the kind of rationality that you need to have classical economic prescriptions work well. Uh, that's great. Now, I got a, a preview of your talk today from your presidential lecture at the American Economic Association recently, and also from your Frisch Memorial Lecture last August in London. And I was really struck by how you went from reaching back to Jeremy Bentham and moved right up to the current day with neuroeconomics. It's really quite a range of topics. I assume you're going to talk about all those today in your lecture? I will talk about some of, some of that today. And uh, I, I have to say, you know, I, I'm, I'm now a, a senior economist. And when I was a junior economist, I always thought that what I was doing seemed to be quite a break from the past. And there really wasn't much need to read more than a few months back in the literature. And as I've gotten older I, and read more, I realized that uh, it, that's short-sighted, that many ideas, including what seem to be new ideas, are implicit, maybe sometimes they have to be teased out a little, but implicit in what economists have thought in the past. And I now find it's really very helpful to go back and look at what the, what the old guys did. Well, I know you're working in your lab on many issues, and one of the issues we were talking about earlier was Medicare Part D. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing on that, a uh, hot current issue? Uh, on Medicare Part D, we're, uh, we've done a survey of people to find out uh, how much they know about it. This is, a, by the way, a, a classic example of a complex commodity, very complex commodity, where people have no previous experience and where all of the, the uh, problems that people have, in this case, create a perfect storm of uh, problems in dealing with market choices. And uh, so we did a survey in the fall to asking about people's knowledge and their intentions and also their preferences. We did hypothetical uh, choices to see what kinds of insurance plans people would really prefer. And the result of, of that has, uh, of that analysis is what we're working on now. Uh, but I guess the main thrust of it is that uh, these are hard choices for people and, and a lot of them are not going to get it right. And so if you want to run a program like this through private markets with lots of choices and with products being marketed by firms in their interests, uh, then you've got to help the consumer get up to speed. Great. What other issues is your lab looking at besides Medicare Part D? Sorry? Anything else your lab looking at these days besides Medicare Part D? 
Well, uh, the Medicare Part D is actually a small part of a rather large project to try to, to determine how to measure consumers' uh, perceptions and preferences, and in particular, how to deal with the problem that when you ask them questions in surveys, you get a, a signal, which may be something about how they really think, but at the other part of it is noise having to do with the way the, the survey is set up. And we're trying to develop techniques for improving survey uh, technology. Well, as we wrap up this interview, uh, do you want to tell us something else about what drives you, what makes you interested in certain topics, and what other things you plan to do in the future? Well, I'm, I'm, dri I'm driven by curiosity and by uh, uh, sort of the, the dark side of curiosity is that you know, when I have a problem unsolved, I can't put it down. It, 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 I have to worry it till it's worked out. And uh, I, I retired. I have a five-year plan to get my work week down to 70 hours. <laughs> uh, I, I, would, as, I would hope that as I get a, a little older, I can. Uh, I, I enjoy a lot of things in life. I look forward to doing a few things beyond beyond economics. I, I already do. I, I like I like to make wine. I like to, I like to write actually. Uh, so. And you have your own winery in, in, is it in Napa. In in Napa, in yes. Napa, yeah. And what's the brand name of your wine? Well, uh, our, our own vineyard is named Simbley Vineyard, but we sell grapes to a commercial winery called Bighorn Cellars. And so there's a, McFad there's a uh, McFadden Vineyard oh. wine produced by Bighorn from our, our grapes. They, they do a nice job on it.